It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. Buckle up for a big cup of coffee this week from Slumberland at the Lake. I'm Wild Will. I'm Uncle Chris. And it was rainy when we recorded this week, but... Monsoony rainy. Yeah, a lot of storms, a lot of things going on out on the coast. And hey, a lot of things going on this week, not just here at the lake, but around the world. Uh, attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. Yeah. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Very scary. And just as scary, did you see the national anthem being sung before the All-Star Game Home Run Derby I Monday? I didn't, didn't see it, but I heard about it. I guess it was atrocious. Oh, it was awful. Wow. A lot, lot going on in here locally. We've got an election coming up. The state rep battle between uh, Dr. Lisa Thomas and Jeff Fernetti starting to heat up just a little bit. Hey, the Ozarks Amp, they're growing, right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're parking, they're traffic, they're having issues with it. Well, they're looking at the uh, Camden County. Hey, can you help us out? So we'll tell you about that. And our LOZ app, LOZ Rumor Mill, we'll tell you about some stuff, including a Camdenton firefighter. Yeah. Did you see he was shot while battling a fire? I did see that. That's pretty scary. That and a whole lot more. But first, what's going on with the Slumberland anniversary sale? Hey, everybody. Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. We're in the middle of our 57th anniversary sale. And do we have some deals for you? Like the sectional right behind me? Dual recliners, cup holders, all for $12.95. Or this super comfy swivel glider recliner. And we have this Ashley sofa available in two colors in need of a mattress. We have the special anniversary edition hybrid mattress, 17 inches. You need to come check out our anniversary sale, Slumberland Furniture, where we're bringing happy home. All right, so as we welcome you back to this week's cup of coffee, we're ready for a big time show. And as we get close to the election, you know, it's hard not to talk about what we saw this week mm. nationally on Saturday at the rally. Former President Donald Trump, of course, the Republican front runner for the upcoming presidential election, was uh, attempted assassination. There's lots of questions around that, but what a scary sight. Regardless of where you sit, like, what a scary sight. Yeah, and I wasn't watching it live when it happened. We were out to dinner, but uh, I kept getting texts, you know, shots fired at the president. I'm like, oh, what's going on? When I went back and watched the actual you know, live thing, the shots ring out and he goes down, the Secret Service take him down to the ground. He was down there for a while and you didn't know what happened. You didn't know if he was hit, if he was dead, what what happened, you know. And it had to be a good 15, 20, maybe even 30 seconds before he got up and you saw he was okay. He'd been hit in the ear and everything, but wow, it seems to me there are a lot of questions how the shooter could get that close on a roof, point blank range to take a shot at the president, right? I mean, how how horrible a job did the Secret Service do on that? Yeah, and I mean, that's been the topic, of course, everyone talking about it, and as, and as soon as it took place, it didn't take long for the conspiracy theorists to hit the web and everything from, hey, it was uh, the left, it was Joe Biden, you know, he had said uh, kind of, made the phrase, you know, put, put a target. Trump in the uh, in the bullseye, I think is yeah, what he put said. Put a yeah. bullseye yeah. on him, maybe figuratively, maybe, maybe literally, but that, that started. And then of course you had inside the Trump camp and the conservatives that said, oh, uh, it, that was that. Well, the liberals said, hey, this looks like an inside job. It must've been like a blood capsule he hit in his ear and it was made to, to look make him look good and now he's gonna be reelected. And I also heard from someone locally that uh, they don't believe that was really Donald Trump up there on stage and it hasn't mm. been for a while that it was a stunt double wearing a mask. And so I'm like, there's all kinds of things being said about that. But what it made me think of was, man, it is a monumental thing when you know there's an attempted assassination on a president. Um, and there's always controversy surrounding it. You look in history and I was like, man, there's been a lot, believe it or not, of attempted assassinations on United States presidents yeah, over the years. No doubt about it. I mean, Abraham Lincoln was the first one, right? Shot at Ford's Theater when he and his wife were watching uh, a play there at Ford's Theater. That was in 1865, right after the Civil War, 1865. The next one, James Garfield, second president to be assassinated. This was in 1881. So that's less than 20 years later, right? Uh, and uh, that I think he was like six months into his presidency when he got shot walking through a train station in Washington, D.C. That was July 2nd. Uh, the next one was uh, William McKinley, shot after giving a speech in Buffalo, New York. That was before the Bills 
were around, right? That was September of 1901, so that was 20 years after the last one, right? So they seem to be coming in 20-year increments, those first three, Lincoln, Garfield, and then McKinley. And then after McKinley... It took a while. It was Teddy Roosevelt, but Teddy Roosevelt became president when McKinley died, right? And he served basically two terms, went away, and then he wanted to come back and be president again. And when he was campaigning in 1912, he got shot while giving a speech, much like Trump, and you heard some of those comparisons this last week when Trump was shot. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt got hit in the chest, but he had some stuff in his pocket, and the bullet hit that and probably saved his life, right? So he kept giving the speech even though the bullet was in his chest. He, he literally said it's going to take more than, you know, one shot at me <laughs> to, to take me out. And then he, after he finished the speech, he went to the hospital and was tended to and, and made yeah. a full recovery. But that was insane, you know, the way that he just, kept going. It yeah. did, did like afterwards, Trump told the Secret Service, you know, that's why that comparison was there, yep. to wait. And then, you know, he had to do the, the fist pump at the crowd and get the crowd pumped up. And it did have similar, you know, very appearance. similar things. You know, and of course, Trump caught heat for saying, fight, 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 you know, and of course the, you know, his people think that was the greatest thing ever. Uh, the liberal side is saying, oh, he's just stirring up, you know, uh, it's like craziness going on the two sides of this thing. And what's insane is if you are shot at, and it is legitimate to have the fortitude to get up and and you could say, hey, that's enticing violence. Obviously, people believe he did that on January 6th. You know, that's a big thing that everyone talks about, which is kind of a crock of crap. Yeah. Kind of like that. It's obviously he wasn't saying fight, fight, fight. He said, hey, look, this is the this is the point that we're at. I'm People are shooting at me. Don't quit fighting. If they take me out, remember why I started this. Remember why we're doing this. And so that had that similar thing to it. Of course, obviously, we're happy President Trump turned out to be okay, but there were some injuries and deaths. Yeah, unfortunately, the victim was identified as firefighter Corey Comparatori, and they're saying he died a hero, absolutely did. Father, husband, firefighter, uh, heartbreaking. Our thoughts and prayers go out to him, his family, and friends, of course. So Teddy Roosevelt shot but lived in 1912, and then it was a while until the next one. JFK, John F. Kennedy, of course, shot in Dallas. One of the most infamous, I yes. mean, well-known, one of the biggest conspiracy theories, along with you know, you mentioned Lincoln and uh, that there's a lot of conspiracy theories around that. But there's been a lot of attempts and a lot. It's crazy when you look and Donald Trump's wasn't the first time. It was actually the fourth time there's been a plot to murder him. Now, a lot of times they find out about these against these high profile political candidates. You won't hear about it for years yeah. because it's stopped and prevented from happening. That shows the level of security that surround these guys. And so that's, I think, why there's so many questions surrounding what happened Saturday is really a 20 year old kid who doesn't have great aim with the semi assault, semi automatic assault rifle from what would be with that gun point blank range. Mm -hmm. And you saw different videos of people saying, hey, there's someone up there. Then you saw really the Secret Service didn't act incredibly quick. No. Nope. They allowed former President Donald Trump to kind of push them away and get back to the crowd. And it's like, well, if there's a second shooter anywhere, his head is going to be like JFK. I mean, you hate to say it, but that mm -hmm. gruesome scene like a watermelon. And so that's what I'm, I'm wondering. There's a lot around that. And I was surprised when I told you, I was like, man, let's look at other assassination attempts. Yeah. Other presidents have been assassinated. And I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln had numerous attempts. And obviously he was an abolitionist. And in a time when the North and South did not like each other and didn't like the idea of having him in the White House. I mean, there were numerous attempts. Uh, William Howard Taft, Herbert Hoover more than once, as you said. FDR, Obama, believe it or not, he was the first black president ever. I, a couple of attempts on his life. Harry S. Truman, uh, JFK was controversial. That was the third attempt on his life that they got. So, I mean, I was just shocked at how common this was. And Bushes, Clinton, numerous. Clinton had four attempts at his life. I mean, I just was looking at these numbers and I was like, man, people are lost their ever loving mind. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I, and a lot of those, like you said, we don't even know about. You know, I didn't realize Bill Clinton had had that many uh, assassination attempts and stuff like that. But you know, uh, there are plots that they find that they shut down. 
Uh, and, and sometimes they get through and things get done. The thing, and, and in today's political world, the way government has been uh, weaponized, you know, it's like what's going on with the Justice Department now with the lawfare they've got going against Trump. You know, that is just outrageous and, and it's crap, but the, the government has been weaponized to go after Trump in that way. So you wonder, okay, well, has that hit the Secret Service? Did they leave the window open for a shooter to have a po point blank shot at Trump? It, it makes you wonder. Sure. You know, you hope that's not the case. And supposedly they're going to do investigations. But again, if it's government, are they going to cover it up if they're if sure. if they open the door for that? I mean, there's a lot of questions there. Uh, a ton. And what I saw was a little bit of. Uh, and maybe I'm naive, or but a little bit of humility from both sides and a little bit of call for unity, and I don't know how genuine that is, but I did question myself, and I thought, man, even if you don't like the guy, if you're not a Trump supporter, like I'm not a President Biden guy, I wouldn't want him to win the election, but I was thinking about if he were to be assassinated while he were in office, that would absolutely rock me to my core because he holds the most prestigious office. Whether you agree, you know, I just thought about how crazy that would be if we did have a president assassinated in our time, how that'd be crazy. Yeah. And then you realize, well, as much as we're divided and as much as you're on one side of the ticket, we're still the United States of America. And this might be an opportunity to kind of slow down. And I was thankful to see both sides saying, hey, with this political climate that is so hot, maybe let's cool this down a little bit. And I even saw at the RNC, there was a little bit of uh, dulled down uh, as far as maybe some of the fight rhetoric, you know, as far as take it, take the fight to them, don't quit fighting. Um, and so it's interesting because this is one of the most heated political battles we've ever seen. We're going into just off our first debate. You're headed into the primary in August. And now you have an attempted assassination on the president. And so it is, I'm not going to use the word unprecedented because that's all we've used since 2019, 2020, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens moving forward. Um, and it's more important now than ever just to make sure uh, that you know what your end game looks like. Yeah. Um, and the, the divisions are so wide right now, uh, you know, on, on both sides. I mean, you've got the you know, President Biden and his people calling Trump Hitler. In fact, uh, you know, there was a, a recent uh, magazine article with Trump's face, you know, with the Hitler mustache and all that put on there. You know, I mean, they ha it has gotten very, very, very ugly. Yeah. And when you see that kind of ugliness, it's not really a surprise when things like this happen. Hopefully they can tamp it down and the, the, the divisions can come together. Although, uh, you know, I don't know. It uh, probably not likely to happen. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, all right, so and you think that stuff like that nationally, uh, maybe it doesn't get as bad at the state level or locally, and and sometimes that's not the case. I mean, currently, you know, our state uh, representative battle here for District One Twenty Three that represents the Lake of the Ozarks area uh, for the state of Missouri. Yeah, uh, it's been held by Dr. Lisa Thomas. She's the incumbent. She was elected in two thousand twenty. Um, and she has a challenger, Jeff Fernetti, we're familiar with him, Ballparks National. Right. Um, and recently that race has gotten very contended. On June 20th, they had their first public forum and uh, some interesting tactics brought out, some mudslinging um, on Dr. Lisa Thomas's part. Initially in this race there, she kind of went out of order and decided she was going to ask her own question, but she picked somebody in the crowd with a camera that she had appeared to have come there and that was met with a resounding um, objection from the people there and that was the first thing that I had heard about hey this race is getting kind of nasty already. Mm -hmm. Well fast forward to this last weekend and I'm contacted by Osage Beach Mayor Michael Harmison. He'd been trying to get my attention in regards to what he believes to be a big deal with the Ballparks National Grant. Well I'm not really familiar with the Ballparks National Grant and so I agreed to speak with Mayor Michael Harmison, which was interesting because this is happening, you know, in Camdenton, Roach, that area. Yeah. You know, not which is not, not his city. Yeah. Um, so I found it interesting. But anyway, uh, I had been informed and found out that with the ARPA money, which is COVID funds, that there was 
money to be applied for through a grant program for um, big tourism drivers, big things, economic development developers that help the area. And so it had to be a, tied to or part of a government entity. And so Ballparks National applied with the local convention and visitors bureau and got approved for up to $2.7 million in funding that would go into the growth and the development and maybe the uh, uh, overall business model for Ballparks National to help it grow and get more people to come to Lake of the Ozarks. And so what Michael Mayor Michael Harmison had called me to tell me was, you know, there was a huge error in, in bookkeeping here and they, you know, there was misuse of funds and I don't find that he's honest. You need to talk with Dr. Thomas. And, you know, I, Dr. Thomas had sent a lot of the same things and they've got a lot of uh, paperwork and a lot of dockets. And I was just like, man, this is all to me, even if this is true and even if there is wrongdoing with this funding as far as a what I am investigating look like it might be a uh, accounting error and there's probably going to be some um, issues that have to be done, but it looks like it's been fixed. The money has been paid and I can't prove any of this. I just found out about this Saturday. I mean, they acted like this was big news or something, um, but they said Lake Expo won't pick it up. Dan Fields won't pick it up. No one's going to pick it up. Uh, we need somebody to tell this story. And their angle is, hey, this guy's not honest. He can't be running for public office. And I'm like, well, this is all so strange because the timing is ironic when Dr. Lisa Thomas, for the first time since she's been in office, has a challenger that has a lot of momentum in Jeff Fernetti. Jeff Fernetti happens to be tied into Ballparks National and they've got federal grant money, not local taxpayer money, federal grant money, free COVID money that's coming in to help grow one of the largest tourism drivers at Lake of the Ozarks. And I don't know the details there, but there was some kind of error made in calculating. So that's what they're running with and saying there's all kinds of things there. You need to tell this story. But my question is, well, where have you guys been in real issues that's not with free government COVID money, but local people here in your district, like the contractors at Nichols apartment with that development when they went four months without seeing a dollar. Would have loved to have your voice at that point in time. And Mayor Michael Harmison, that's actually in your city. So what my question is at this point in time, regardless of that, is it good to shed light on this as the state rep when this ARPA grant, that $2.7 million were accessible. And yes, there were issues, and I found out there were issues because on June 24th, the Missouri Department of Economic Development sent a letter to the CVB saying that they've completed the review and they're gonna shut off the funds at the 800,000 that had been utilized and they were gonna have a closeout process. And so legally, that's all being taken care of and looked at, and I think it can be reviewed and maybe even upended where the rest of that $2.7 million could be injected. However, this letter, I don't think comes until there's a lot of activity on the other side to get people to look at this. And so I'm not sure how big of a deal this is, but it does appear to me that Dr. Lisa Thomas is the one that got a lot of light shed on this with the help of Mayor Michael Harmison. And that would be awful ironic timing when there's an upcoming election for the 123rd district for state rep here in the state of Missouri. And all of a sudden, now this is the most I've heard from Dr. Lisa Thomas since she's been elected in 2020. And it just seems like a, what would you call a smear campaign against somebody? And at the end of the day, if you're the state rep for the Lake area, do you want $2.7 million of free COVID money that the taxpayers aren't losing or aren't injecting into it. Do you want to lose that just so you can look good through the campaign process? And I'm not saying that's the totality of what's going on. I'm sure there's going to be things to look into, into this COVID money and the way that it was used, but it does seem awful ironic. And simply because Mayor Michael Harmison is the first one sounding the trumpet and reaching out and beating his chest about how terrible this is and he can't sleep at night. But my question is, where were your ethical concerns with Jeff Tagethoff? And although that's back on track, that four month delinquency, I still had an issue with, and there didn't seem to be a lot of concern or lack of sleep at night for him at that point in time. So I apologize if I have a hard time taking him seriously when he cries out to me for help. You gotta tell this story, you gotta look into this. And I did share with Dr. Lisa Thomas how I felt. I feel like this is a smear campaign. I do not like these tactics, and I don't think this is good for the Lake area. Uh, 
Dr. Thomas was very respectful in her reply and gave me a list of her accomplishments because my question is, what have you run on? What is your platform? What are you wanting to get elected for? Outside of shed light on things you don't like about your opponent or trying to make him look bad so you can yield votes, what are you doing for the lake area to make it better and to promote economic development and growth? And so that was my questions. I let them know, and I don't think she loved that. She said, hey, another media outlet will pick this up. And Mayor uh, Harmison said, hey, the truth is going to come out. And I said, hey, I welcome it. That's what we're here for. So it uh, be interesting to see, but I'll tell you, that battle headed into this August 6th primary is not going to get cooler. It's going to get hotter, and yeah. it's going to get more heated between these two. And so I hate to see it here at the local level, but I was like, man, why is Mayor Michael Harmison involved in this on her behalf? And she says, no, he reached out to me. So it's just like, it seems political. It seems nasty. And I'm not saying that it is, but it appears to be a smear campaign. And I don't think that's going to do Dr. Lisa Thomas any favors because people here at the Lake area are very, very smart. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's funny because when we first talked about this, which was last weekend, you were showing me some of the information and the details. And we just got to talking about you know, how nasty is the political business. I mean, you know, I mean, kudos to those people who are in politics because you can apparently handle that nastiness. And I mean, sure. that would just eat me up. I, I, you know, I couldn't handle that. Right. It would just, whether it's true, whether it's not true, it's just is so nasty, ugly, dirty. It's too bad that it has to be that way, but it seems like that's the way it is. Yeah, I, I'm always interested. Uh, when you, you decide to throw your name in the cap, you know, to run for some kind of office, I'm like, yeah. man, just make sure you're ready to give up on everything that oh. you hold near and dear to you and love because if you truly are in it to serve, I mean, you basically give up your life and your interests. And it's so sad because we need good people in yeah. politics, you know? And if it comes down to, you know, only the uh, nasty, dirty, ugly, mean people are willing to get in and sling mud and do that stuff, then we're in trouble because they're the people running stuff, right? Uh, which is one of the things that's gotten our country into trouble. Uh, we still need great people to get in and run and do these things, but man, it's tough to put up with some of these nasty, dirty things that go on. You sure, know? no doubt about it. So obviously just a few weeks away from that huge election, uh, we'll have more about that in the coming weeks, but mm. also wanted to give everybody a reminder, hey, upcoming Tuesday, July 23rd at Shawnee Bluff Winery. It's their Give Back Tuesday, and all proceeds this upcoming Tuesday are gonna go to Wonderland Camp. And for those wondering, what's Give Back Tuesday? Well. Really cool local event. Uh, every one time a month on Tuesday, they open up at 11. They're serving dinner till eight or nine, and they've got a bistro menu, brick oven pizza, of course, wine, bourbon flights uh, right there. One of the greatest views. And the cool thing is all of the money, all of the sales that night are donated directly back to the designated charity. It's not, hey, all profit. They do that every Tuesday? Every, I mean, every month? Every single month. Wow. Yeah, they do a give back. Tuesday, and so really cool Shawnee Bluff Winery, Gail Griswold, her team, uh, do, do a lot for the community. And if you're wondering about Wonderland Camp, you know, they are a nonprofit, and their mission is to provide fun, inclusive, and safe camp experience for children, teenagers, and adults who have disabilities, and to offer a respite for daily caregiving for their family members and the caregivers that do provide for them throughout the year. And I mean, that's a really great organization. Uh, we love Joe Wilkie. We love Mike Clayton and mm -hmm. Stephanie Daner and all of their volunteers and campers and staff. So really cool opportunity. You get to go have a great meal and all of your bills. So that's we the ate cool there. Thing. Not oh, yeah. too long, man. We had a great meal, man. Oh. That was really good. And I've been back twice since you and I <laughs> went together for that brick oven pizza. Oh. Uh, but here's the cool thing. Most places, you know, hey, we're going to do 50%. No, 100% goes right back to the camp. That's so amazing. Go be part of that and uh, feel great about yourself, but you feel even better after you have a brick oven pizza and maybe a bourbon flight yeah. out there, right? Absolutely. I mean, you didn't because... Uh, Cause you're dry now, but I had the little, the bourbon flight and that was good. That's really, they, they do wine flights too, right? Yeah, they do wine flights, yeah. bourbon flights. And hey, if you get in Friday through Sunday, you're gonna wanna go to the tasting barn. Mm. It's a limited hour. So check out shawneebluff.com to find out. But oh my goodness, that place is, have you been in the tasting barn? Uh, I, I don't think I've been over into the okay, tasting that, barn. That's no. on, on our on the, Yeah, our we gotta list. do that, yeah. All right, coming soon, we'll, we'll be out for that. All right, wake surfers. 
uh, wake borders. Hey, next couple of weekends, there's some wake surfing events right here at Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, Wake uh, Wake for Warriors and Midwest Coast. Wake Surf Open is Saturday, July 20th. Uh, wake for Warriors and the Midwest Coast Wake Surf, uh, Surf Open. It's going to be at Hahatanka Cove. And this is put on by Marine Max, right? And it helps raise money for uh, American military service veterans. Uh, and, and it brings them together. And they even have a competition category tailor-made for wounded warriors that weekend. So that's the first weekend of it, July 20th. And then the next Saturday, uh, July 27th, is Surf Fest. And this is Pinhoke Hollow Cove. Uh, and uh, this amateur wake surfing competition is Family friendly, they tell us, and uh, amateur friendly includes cash prizes for winners in the various age divisions. You can watch if you want to by land at Camp Pin Oak or by water by joining the, the tie up line there. But a couple weeks in a row should be a lot of fun. I mean, if you're kind of into that, go take part, especially that first Saturday where they uh, make money to, for, for some veterans. That's greatness. That and Aquapalooza. Oh, course, yeah. Uh, going on this coming Saturday, the 20th. That should be really cool. All right, so we told you about the uh, assassination attempt. We ran you through some of the mini, uh, but hey, something that I saw here locally. It's time for the LOZ app, LOZ rumor mill, and I'm telling you, we got three of them this week. We'll start with, you see the Camdenton firefighter was shot in the shoulder while fighting a fire? Yeah, this was kind of crazy. So, firefighter from uh, Southwest Camden County, fire district, very lucky. Personnel from the Southwest, Mid-County, Tunis, and Northwest districts responded shortly before 9.30 Monday night, last Monday night, to the residents on AB Church Road after a report of an explosion in the basement while they were working on saving the rest of the house. Uh, one of the firefighters hit in the shoulder when a loaded firearm inside the house went off, right? Apparently because of the fire, because of the heat, not because somebody was shooting at him. Uh, he was hit in the shoulder and uh, treated on the scene and released. But man, how lucky was that guy Wow! Uh, that it just apparently, uh, if he was treated on the scene and released, it wasn't major, that it was just minor, but it could have been much, much, much worse. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but you never think about that. Loaded firearms in a fire can go off, can right. discharge, and obviously people can get hurt there. So glad it turned out that way. All right, next is, what's next for the lodging tax mm. here in the Tri-County area? Well, with the Missouri Supreme Court ruling that the Lake of the Ozarks TCLA was unconstitutional, people are asking, will the collection of the lodging tax continue or cease? Well, Jeff Green, who's the Camden County Counselor, uh, said things legally can still happen, happen. So assuming preemptively nothing is going to happen. He goes, would probably not be wise. That could be dangerous. He said, so in the meantime, Camden County is still going to be collecting the lodging tax, but they're going to hold off on distributing it until the Supreme Court ruling is final and clear of any charges. So I don't know what that means, but we'll keep you posted. Yeah, going to be some that. money in the coffers, it looks like. And then Ozark Amphitheater, you know how they had that big comedy show recently. Apparently, the biggest single attendance for an event at the amphitheater ever that night. Yeah, a single day event, yeah. Yeah, and they had some parking issues. So um, uh, the amphitheater has gone to Camden County commissioners talking to them about how they can, what they can do to alleviate that. They're talking about maybe widening some roads, putting in a middle turn lane, uh, different things like that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with there. Yeah, no doubt, but I love the fact that they're going to the county and saying, hey, at this point in time, we feel like we're big enough. We help the, the county enough. We bring enough people down here that we want to keep growing. We want to keep improving on that, and can you guys help us? So they're working together to look at some solutions down the road. We'll keep you posted on that. And, hey, big news, uh, even if you're not a wrestling fan, Hulk Hogan's coming to Lake of the Ozarks. How about that? The Hulk Hogan, right? What's he going to be doing here? Uh, hopefully not wrestling, uh, <laughs> but he's promoting his new beer, uh, the Real American Rumble, I believe it is. It's Real American Beer, and he's going to be Friday and Saturday this weekend. He's going to be down at the lake. Uh, he'll be Friday night at Frankie and Louie's from 5 to 6, and then at Shady Gators from 8.30 on, and then the next day he'll be at Hy-Vee from 11 to noon, and then he's going to, or he'll be at Macadoodles even before that. So four places in like 
evening and night. I don't know how they're going to get him to and from so quickly. Wow, interesting. I didn't know he had his own beer. I think it's new. I saw JG at Shady Gator said he bought 100 cases, and he's happy that he's coming. He'll be signing autographs. So uh, that, of course, courtesy of the Get Down Guide, that great flyer there. Well, hey, hard to believe uh, we're about out of time. Shootout's right around the corner. We're getting ready to have Aquapalooza, all these crazy events. Uh, before long, summer's going to be over. We better start enjoying it. It's flying by. All right, until next week from Slumberland at the Lake, we'll see you then.